Welcome back to 100 Days of Logic with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be following up from our last video on compound propositions with the answers to those compound propositions that I listed at the end of the last video. If you haven't checked out those propositions and you would like to try to solve them on your own, you should do that now. I'll leave a link to the video somewhere. If you don't want to do those propositions on your own, you should still check this video out because we're going to be learning a little bit of new vocabulary around compound propositions. I apologize for the length of this video, it's going to be a little bit longer than the others in this series, but I think it's pretty important to really understand these answers and understand why they are correct. With that out of the way, let's get going on to the truth tables. So the first of our propositions was P implies P implies P. The first thing we're going to do is list the truth tables under each of our variables. This is pretty simple because we only have one variable here, so there's only two possible worlds. P is either true or P is false. Then we're going to start as far into the parentheses as we can. We're going to start with that red implication in the center. We remember that the only time that implication is false is when the first is true and the second is false, which is never going to be the case here. So we have two trues. It's true in all possible worlds. Then we're going to move out of the parentheses to the blue implication on the left, and we're going to compare the P table on the far left with the red column on the far right. We're going to notice that there is no case in which the left table that we're looking at is true and the right table is false, because the right table is never false. So we are going to have always true. There's a name for when your final result of your proposition is true in all possible worlds. It's called a tautology, or that the proposition is tautologous. It means that we can basically use this proposition whenever we want to in logic. It is basically a rule of logic. As long as the basic principles of logic stand firm, this proposition is also going to stand firm. So, next up, we have P implies Q, implies Q, all implies P. First thing we're going to do, as before, is just list out the truth tables under each of those variables, P and Q. We have four possible worlds because we have two variables. Then we're going to start with the furthest inside the parentheses we can get. That's going to be the red implication between P and Q. And we're just going to use the truth table directly next to that implication. So we remember the only time an implication is false is going to be when the first is true and the second is false. Next, we're going to move on to the blue implication next to the Q. The two columns we're going to be using are the red column on the left and the column that's directly under the Q, which is right after the blue implication. We're going to see that the only time that this is going to be false, once again, is when the first is true and the second is false. That only happens in the final row, where that red is true and the Q is false. Finally, we're going to then take that blue column in the middle and compare it to the column on the very far right under the P to solve for our final truth table for the proposition under that green implication, which is the last operation as we move out we are going to find that the only time it's false is on the third row where that blue column is true and the P column is false. This truth table is not going to be all true, so it's not going to be tautologous, but it's not all false either. It seems to be possible, but not necessary in some sense. So we're going to call it consistent. This proposition is consistent. It's possible for it to be true, but it's also possible for it to be false. Let's take a look at the next problem. This is P implies Q and P or Q all implies Q. First thing is always we're going to fill in our truth tables for each of our variables. Then we're going to start as far in the parentheses as we can get. We could either start with the red implication or the red disjunction. We'll start with the implication because that's the farthest to the left. So this is just simple, basic truth table for implication, because we're only using the columns directly right next to that implication, we see the only time it's false is when P is true and Q is false. Next, we're going to take a look at the disjunction. The only time the disjunction is false is when they're both false there at the bottom. Now we're going to take those two red columns and compare them for our conjunction, that blue ampersand symbol in the center. We're going to see 
if we remember that the only time a conjunction is true is when both propositions are true. There's actually two cases in which both propositions are true, in the first row and the third row. So we end up with true, false, true, false. <clears throat> Finally, we're going to look at that blue in the center with and compare it to the Q on the far right. <clears throat> with implication, it's only going to be false if the first is true and the second is false. Looking carefully, we see that in fact both of these columns are the same, so our implication is going to always be true. <clears throat> As we learned from our first problem, this means that this proposition is tautologous. It is a tautology, and we can use it any time we feel like it. Finally, we had this big monster of a proposition, P, N, Q, or R is materially equivalent to not P or Q, and not R or not P. Wow, that's a monster of a proposition. So, first, what we're going to do is we're going to fill in our truth tables under each of the variables. This is a bit longer. We need eight possible worlds because we have three different variables. That's just going to be two to the third or two to the n, whatever n is, is the number of variables. If you don't know math, ignore what I just said. And we're going to start as far in as we can, as far into the parentheses as we can. So we're going to start with all of the red operations. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at this v, this disjunction on the left. We're going to see the only two times it's going to be false are when the two propositions next to it, the Q and the R, are false. So there's two cases where it's false, in all other cases it's true. Now we're just going to go down and do all of the negations, because remember we do the negations before we do the disjunction that's going to be next to those propositions, because the negation isn't outside the parentheses, it's actually inside the parentheses right next to that proposition. And negations aren't that hard, it's just going to be the opposite of whatever the truth table was before for that proposition. Shouldn't be too tough to fill in. Next up, we're going to work out from the parentheses. We're going to go back to the left. We're going to work on this conjunction, so P and Q or R. Under that conjunction, we're going to use the P, which right is right to the left of it, and that first red column of the disjunction. And we're going to see, as we remember, that a conjunction is only true when both statements are true, which is actually going to happen a couple times. It's going to happen for the first three possible worlds. Both of them are true, and then you'll notice for the next five, at least one of them is false, so the conjunction as a whole is false. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at that blue V, that blue disjunction in the middle. We're going to see that we're going to be comparing the two red columns that are next to it. We're going to be comparing the negation of the P and the Q, because it's not a disjunction between Q and P. It's actually a disjunction between not Q and not P. We remember the only type of disjunction is false, is when both statements are false, which happens in the first two cases. And in all the rest of the cases, at least one of them is true, so the disjunction is going to be true. Next up, we're going to take a look at the final disjunction, that last blue V. Once again, we're going to be comparing the two red columns right outside of it because it's disjoining not R and not P. It's not just disjoining the R and the P themselves. The only time that that disjunction is going to be false, again, is when both statements are false, which happens twice in the first and the third columns. Now we're going to be taking those two blue columns that we just discovered under the disjunctions and combining them into a conjunction, we're going to see when are they both true. We're going to put a true down for that. In all other cases, we're going to list false. There's actually quite a few times that they're both true. All the last five times, they're both true. And the first three, they're false, because at least one of them is false. Finally, we're going to look at our yellow material equivalence sign. When we think back, we remember what is equivalence. Equivalence is it's true whenever they both have the same truth value, and it's false any other time. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the two things we're comparing are going to be the blue ampersand, the blue conjunction on the left, and the green ampersand, the green conjunction on the right. Those two are actually completely opposite. They're a negation of each other. When one is true, the other is false. So in no possible world will this material equivalence, this yellow triple bar in the center, be true. So it's going to be false for all possible worlds. There's something we call this. It's going to be called self-contradictory. Basically, this means that the negation of this whole monster proposition would be a tautology, but there is no possible world in which this proposition is 
True. Watch a new video every single day for a hundred days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.